Are you looking for a way to add some interactivity to your regular Google Slides? Then look no further than Pear Deck. It's the easiest way to add in some interactivity, and now that it has a Google add-on, it is even easier. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you want to make sure you do is come to the add-ons tab within Google Slides and make sure you have the add-on for Pear Deck. If you don't already have that, go into your Get Add-ons, search for Pear Deck, and be sure to install. Once it's installed, you'll need to set up with permissions and then you are ready to begin. So let's begin. Click on the add-on and go to the Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on and go ahead and open that. Now we're all set to begin this lesson with our students. So click on the Start Lesson button. And you'll notice you have two ways in which you can engage students in this activity. One, you can do student paced activity, so they can enter at any time, work at their own pace, and do that asynchronously. Or if you're together as a group, either virtually or in person, you can do that instructor paced activity where you change the slides and manage how the lesson is paced. So for this activity, we'll click on the student paced. And now you'll notice you have the option to share with your students either by copying the link or sharing directly to your classroom. So let's go ahead and share to our classroom to see what that looks like. Okay, so let's begin by selecting the class. And then decide how we want to post this. Do we want to create an assignment, ask a question, make an announcement, or create material? We'll make this an assignment. Click Go. And now you'll notice you can customize this like you would any other assignment. Once you're done, go ahead and click Assign. And then once you're in your Google Classroom, go to the Classroom tab to take a look at that assignment. You'll notice the link is in there, ready for students. And now we're on the student view. So we're going to go into that Pear Deck and go ahead and open up that link. Now students can begin that presentation at their own pace. So we'll go ahead and mark how we're feeling today. And now I'm going to walk through. So I can read through each slide, move forward. And for this first activity, I need to find Greece on Google Earth. So I can go on the right hand side here, launch Google Earth and go ahead and find that. Now I can continue on. So for the next activity, we're using a drag and drop model to identify where these items are. Now for this next option, students will get to go ahead and use the draw tool to identify which scroll goes with either Sparta or Athens. So they can use black or they can identify a different color here. Um, and the nice thing is there's also a line tool. So if we want to keep things straight, I can go ahead and mark everything green with a straight line that goes to Sparta and everything in yellow with a straight line that goes to Athens. Next, I can go ahead and provide my short answer and then drag and drop how I'm feeling about today's lesson. And that's all there is to it. Now we're back to take a look at the teacher dashboard. There are a few things that you can do here. One, you can just walk through each of the slides to remember what each of them have. Um, but additionally, you can see student responses as they populate in. Now, if I take a look at my top right hand corner, I'll notice the join code is there if I need to add students again. Or I can also note that two students had already been in here. Uh, zero out of two means they were active, but they finished and now they are done. So there's no one currently active, but two submissions. So as I go through my slides and I go to the third slide, for example, I've opened up the responses to keep those viewable. And as I hover over them, I can see who submit what options. The next slide, I have the activity where students had to draw lines and I can scroll through to see each of their responses. You can also do a grid view of student responses or layer those responses so they are all on a single slide. Now the short answer responses will come through in this comment feed and you can see Stefan IMC is feeling very confident about his answers. And the final slide here, you'll notice there are the different flags of the students identifying how they're feeling about today. So a couple of other things to note. On the bottom is another reminder of how many responses have been submit. And also the option to stop that student paced session at any time. 
You can click on the three dots here for additional options. So at this point, I'm going to end our session and say, yes, I am sure, and I will give it a name. And we're going to save and exit. Now, it does create some takeaways that you can share out, or you can return to your Google Slides. And now you're back where you started with the option to begin again or make some edits. The very last thing that I want to show you is how to manage your different sessions. So if you log in to Pear Deck on its own, so you can go to app.peardeck.com backslash home and then click on the sessions tab. From here, you'll be able to see all of the different sessions that you've started, whether or not they're closed, what type of session they are, and so forth. Additionally, you'll be able to access the slides using this quick link, so it will take you right to that file. And then you have a few icons here. The first one is to go back into the classroom view. So you can see that as it would be live, essentially. You can also go back to the teacher dashboard where you can view student responses rolling in. Additionally, you can click on the snowman or the three dots to access additional options, including the option to reopen the session if needed. And that is all there is to getting started with Pear Deck. Mm -hmm.